Night Coffee with Nat. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Night Coffees with Nat. This is a special celebration. I'm doing it solo. Well, actually, not really. This is my special guest star, Billie Jean Rotano. And today's very big day. Uh, Pamela Anderson's book is coming out. So it's called Lust for Love, where you're rekindling intimacy. So what we wanted to do was talk about all my VIP stories because everybody always makes me tell the story. So we'd love to hear from you. Please, 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 please tell us what you like, what you don't like. Um, if you want Billie Jean, uh, you can't have her. You can find us on new, you, iTunes or anywhere you podcast. Um, my website is natalieretano.net. Check your YouTube or your Facebook or your Twitter under Natalie Rutano. And my Instagram is supernat444. Love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is super exciting doing something like this. Um, so <clears throat> tonight... We are doing, I'm doing Night Coffee with Nat solo. And I'm going to talk about all my stories from VIP. People ask me all the time. I don't really talk about it because the reason we did this whole push to begin with is that I'm starting a new chapter in my life. And it's all um, geared towards women in their 50s. I'm 51 years old. And I just felt like it's not over, you know? I'm still super fun. I feel like the same person that everybody saw on TV. And, you know, when your life starts to change a little bit like that, you kind of feel like crap. And I just want to be there to educate women that are coming into this cool time in life. And I want to help you stay in shape. And this is not the way you stay in shape. That's why we try to narrow night coffee down to maybe one night a week. Um, but, uh, everybody really still always wants to know about my, my days on VIP. So today we're going for it. It's part one. We'll see how it goes. There might be part two. <laughs> okay. So a lot of people ask me, cheers, everybody out there. Here we go. How did I get VIP? I was not an actress. I was in a singing group. Um, we were getting a record deal. Somebody told me I would be good for this part. Pam and the team at Columbia TriStar were shooting a uh, presentation and I got called in to do the part of Nikki Franco, which kind of is my alter ego without the guns, bombs, and, and the ability to fix cars. Hi, how you doing? I couldn't fix a car if I had like $10 million in front of me. So um, I went in, just Pam and I hit it off immediately, okay? And we literally were in the audition just talking and, and there, I was like, what are all these people doing? Because I really wasn't pursuing an acting career and there were like all these people and they were called the studio heads. And so they were like, are you guys going to read the stuff? And I ended up being horrible because I wasn't an actress. Um, somehow I got it. We did the presentation. Pam and I, nine months pregnant, were in a scene together. She, it's like a bomb scene or something. We're talking. She's telling me her entire life story, like about this guy from high school. And we're not, not paying attention. Now, if you know anything about the movie business or TV business, like, when a stunt goes off and it doesn't go, you have to pay the stunt people again. And she and I are like, are you serious? What? And like the whole scene's going on behind our back and we are talking. And they're like, ah, hello, action. And we're like, ah, so we have to do it again. Um, the presentation that day was over. I took my one picture with Pamela Anderson and I was like, oh my God, what a day, you know, on to my singing career. Anyways, uh, I ended up, what happened was the show got picked up and they went on a, a nationwide <clears throat> search to find a real actress for Nikki Franco. And it ended up, they couldn't find the person and they came back to me. So I 
had one of my students who was an acting coach. I traded him uh, personal training classes and he like helped me with acting. And we just, cause I was like, when I got this opportunity for a second chance, I was like, oh, I'm getting this. And it was like the weirdest feeling because I knew that deep down I was supposed to do it. I don't even know why. It's just like one of those gut feelings. And women, you know what gut feelings are. Oprah tells us all the time, pay attention to them, good, bad, or anything. They're real. They're your, they're your soul talking to you or your spirit or your guides or whatever. So um, I just, I, I, I ended up testing for it and um, I got an awesome manager, Steven Jensen, shout out to you, baby, because we crushed it in that time of our lives. And um, I got the show. Um, so the show started to happen. And of course my singing group, I got kicked out of my singing group. And um, luckily I'm still friends with everybody. We went through a little rough patch because they were mad at me, but I think that, you know, time heals most wounds, I would have to say. Um, so I had no idea that this was going to be a hit show like it was, but it was just so fun. It's like, this is not work. And it, it's like every moment was fun. So, uh, where do I even start about, about VIP? Pam and I hit it off. So we started hanging out all the time together. Okay. And, um, I was going to tell, I was going to tell a story about the first season when, uh, it was the last episode and, well, how it all happened was Ice-T played a villain for a few years on the show. And I met Ice at the Tommy Hilfiger opening in Beverly Hills, the, the store. And I guess the show had already been coming out. I was with my late friend, uh, Sammy Sarpong, my little brother. And we he was a, a Tommy Hilfiger model, so he brought me to this event. And Ice came up to me and was like, What's up, superstar? And I was like, um, you're the superstar. He goes, no, you're the superstar. So I was like, oh my God, would you be on our show? Because we did teasers all the time with celebrities. And um, he was like, uh, yeah. So I, from the Tommy Hilfiger party, I called the executive producer, Morgan Gendow. Hi, Morgan. And I was like, Ice T said he wants to be on our show. So that just started the ball rolling. The first episode that he did, we were shooting in um, Vegas. By the way, Vegas is my guilty pleasure and I love going there and I love shopping there and I love like just going out all night and being insane. Um, so we, were, we went there, the episode was there. Uh, we were shooting at the strip club um, killing some bad guys that like were around the strip club or whatever. So Ice T's day of shooting was like the day after the Mike Tyson fight um, with, I forget who the guy's name was. Um, everybody was in Vegas for that fight. And he came up like a day later. But that night we went to, to this strip club at Cheetahs. I think it was Cheetahs. We were there like all night and I'm on the phone, my cell phone, like, that night was crazy. We champagne roomed it right on up, you know? It was to the point where like, I left clothing there, okay? Like, I left my shoes there, but I was like, we're shooting here the next day, I'm sure I'll find it. Hi, how you doing? Um, so Ice-T gets there the next day, cause he was driving up and we were like communicating on our cell phones and we shoot. So I'm in my trailer and the, hair department well we went to a magic show that day and i ice called me to his room in planet hollywood he's like can you braid my hair and i was like of course i can braid your hair no problem so i we were going to a magic magic show with all his friends and um i was i did his hair i braided his hair i don't ask me why i know how to braid hair but i do okay and um hung out all day we shoot the next day the hair department comes to, and the AD come to my trailer and they're like, um, can we talk to you for a second? I was like, yeah, what's up? You know, I'm like sleeping. Cause I'm like, you know, when you're in Vegas, you're hungover every day. And, um, they're like, uh, ice 
will only let you do his hair if he wants you to braid his hair. And I was like, excuse me? They're like, Nat. I'm like, <laughs> what? And I had to do Isa's hair for that episode. <laughs> he didn't want anybody doing his hair but me. Like, I'm like, Whoa. I'm like, I, I gotta like, are you serious? You guys are like, please do it. We're losing light. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do it. So I did Ice T's hair for that season, um, that episode that we were shooting in Vegas. So that's one fun story. And I love Ice T. We, we were very good friends for years and everything. And that's one of my stories. Um, I have a little bit more of a serious story and especially in light of like the Me Too movement and it's not a Me Too story, but it kind of like, like has something like a vibe about it. So every, every, uh, episode we would have like a teaser with a celebrity like we we had everybody like the guy who played, um, uh, Sherman Helmsley, uh, we had Charles Barkley, which was so, uh, that's a story. I'm gonna tell a Charles Barkley story. Um, uh, God, we had so many good teaser people. Um, but we got to the set one day and we're like, who's the, who's the teaser star? And somebody said, Joey Buttafuoco. And I was like, Excuse me? Joe Bud, if you goes on our show, I'm like, uh-uh. He's not on our show. Like, it's on set at the time. And I was like, this is a girl power show. We're going to have Joey Bud, if you go, who is famous. What's Joey Bud, if you go famous for? I mean, I know they're healed, all that stuff. Congratulations. But they're famous for Joey Bud, if you go in Long Island, cheating on his wife of a million years with some young girl and the young girl shooting the wife's face off. Like, hell no. And so when Pam came to set, like I waited until Pam came to set and like the whole crew was there. I was like, you know who the guest star is today? Or the the, the, the star or the teaser star? She's like, no, who's that? And I'm like, it's Joey Buttafuoco. She's like, who's that? She didn't know who Joey Buttafuoco is. Like, well, I don't, I'm not surprised. Um, but I, so I explained the story. She goes, wait, what? I was like, this is a girl power show. And I just want to tell everybody on the set, I'm not going to be in a scene with him. She's not going to be in a scene with him. And none of those girls wants what they find out. And so they had, they, they fired him for that episode. I was like, not doing a scene with him. I'm very sorry. Bye, Joey. Peace out. So that was kind of like our girl power movement, my girl power movement at the moment. Um, what is another fun, fun story? Um, what was the one I just said that I was going to tell? Oh, oh, the Charles Barkley one. Oh, 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 this is good. So Charles Barkley, um, before I did VIP, I did about a million jobs. I was like florist, a babysitter, a nanny. I, I, did, I was a PA for my Uncle Joe, who was not uncle by blood, but Joe Pitka, anybody out there in the, in the TV or commercial world knows that Joe Pitka is the legend. He did every Pepsi commercial with Shaq, Cindy Crawford, Beyonce, Britney Spears, everybody. And I was a PA. I went and got the coffee for everybody. I went and got bagels first thing in the morning for him. And if they weren't hot, I got yelled at, which I was like, whatever. Um, I drove the executive of uh, Pepsi around. God rest his soul, he passed away. Uh, and I'd pick him up and we'd go, we'd run errands for his wife. And, you know, like I was that person. And um, so. I found out he did all the Charles Barkley did a bunch of commercials with my uncle as well. So uh, when I found out Charles was on the show, I, um, you know, I was like, hey, nice to meet you. And he go, he said to me, he goes, the only reason I did this was because of you. And I was like, oh, really? So um, 
obviously we all went out that night. We went to the Ivy. Desmond, our hairdresser, came. There was a huge table of people. That I remember the guy that played on Saved by the Bell, the, the principal. He was there because he and Charles Barkley are like super good friends. And then we went to um, the Garden of Eden. That was like a club. We were in the VIP. My friends who were like my enemies at the time, they were like part of my singing group that hated me and, the, and that group, which by the way, then turned all around and we all became best friends. But at the time, they were mad. They were mad that like this show was actually happening and um, I was there. So I was sitting next to Charles. They kept on spilling drinks on me on purpose and I am was a psycho. Like, I'm not tr checking for people treating me like that. Like, don't treat me like that today, okay? I'll punch you in the face. So I'm like, these, these bitches are really throwing drinks on me. Like, I'm sitting here, and my beautiful new dress that I wore, uh, got to go out to this night, has is doused in, like, by, like they'd walk past and they'd be like, uh, or bumping into me, and I was like, I jump on him, I, I take my shoes off, jump on him, he's huge, right? And I'm like three, nine, whatever. And I go and I literally go to dive on the girls and he mid air like grabs me and it was like, you can't get in a fight now, like they can sue you. I'm like, you know, F this, oh fuck, I'm like, I'm, I'm out of here. Like either you're with me or you're not, I'm out of here. Like, and I left. So that was my, I was like, and what are you giving me fight stories? Aren't you arrested all the time? Like for being fist fights? Like he was like a crazy hothead at the time. But, um, yeah, I was like not having it. And I still won't take anybody treat me like crap. And you out there know who you are ever. So I'm going to keep that going. Um, Let's see. <sighs> Big part of VIP was B.E. on Howard Stern. Howard Stern. We, we had so much fun. I'm going to take a drink before I do this one. Um, we had so much fun. One time we did the show. We met Howard. We were down for Upfronts in New Orleans. Howard was there with Robin. They were at the same hotel we were. We ended up like having uh, dinner, hanging out with them. And so the next time we did the show, we like knew them. And they were like, let's party. And where does, where at that time did Howard like to party? And where were all his guests? But scores. Okay, so we went to scores with Howard Stern. It was me, it was Pam, it was, uh, is, who's the girl that did Pam's makeup? It's not Ellen. Um, she's amazing, too. Uh, she was there. Steven, my manager. Robin Givens was there. Her boyfriend at the time. Tony, I don't know if they're still together or anything. Because I don't, believe it or not, I don't listen as much as I should. Oh, my God. Talk about a night to remember. Like, who could say they went to scores with Howard Stern? Not too many people. I guess maybe. Uh, some people did. But that was like amazing and uh our favorite drink that this is pam and i we we love like my night coffee now is just wine but back in the day we were vodka people and we drank these drinks called madrasas like by the gallon um we would drink they were vodka cranberry grapefruit juice and we every oh we're madras madras this madras that madras this madras that um so that was our night coffee. And I don't even think I drank wine back then. It was more about the madrasas, like going out to clubs and dancing on tables, popping many bottles, just, just crazy. Like I have pictures of us walking on tables and those were the days. And those were the days, thank goodness that there were no cell phones to take pictures and bust you and TMZ was like maybe just getting an idea of like doing TMZ and like there were some photographers, but not, it was not like, you know, I probably have no reputation whatsoever. I'm trying to be like a leader in the fitness community. And I can because you don't have videos of those days. 
Um, one of my favorite things that I, that I did a million years ago and brought it to VIP, they're NAT-isms, but I, I do acronyms for everything, but I have like NAT-isms, like everything is a brick. Like if something's bad, it's a brick. Um, I got that from an ex-boyfriend of mine that worked at Motown Records and cassette, people would send cassettes in and they play a cassette like somebody that would send their music in. And if it was bad, they had a foam brick that they would throw at the recording machine back in the day. Like, it, like they, it's, it was, you know, literally cassettes back then. Uh, I know, I'm 51, what do you want from me? Okay, there were cassettes. And kids out there, you probably don't even know what cassettes are. Um, so I got that from him and we took that. I mean, I still say that now, like in our coming up, we're gonna have top 10 brick of the week, bricks of the week. Okay, and wait, what was the top brick of this week? There was a brick, wasn't there? Oh, Chloe. That Tristan thing was a brick. And you know what, Chloe? If I was your girl, man, I'd totally have your back on that, and I might punch him in the face. Um, guys, can you try not cheating? I mean, newsflash. Like, can you get any better than her? Hello, goodness. All right, don't get me started on that. Um, my acronyms, I got a lot of acronyms. And Pam was into it and we used to put it in the show. We would train, we would change the script and put acronyms in it. Like, well, I'd go to, I'd go to set and I'm like, I, I, I have WVs right now. I'm like, the like weird vibes. Like she's like, I have WVs too. I'm like, totally WVs. Like everything's so weird. Like what's up, you know? WVs, weird vibes. And then like, oh. Um, um, see, did you see the co-star today? Total CG, cute guy on the set. Um, and then if there was somebody that was a, a, an ass kisser, we'd like, oh, total J-O-T-B-W. Jump on the band wagon. JOTB dubs, you know those people. Yes, 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 and yes. JOTBW people. Um, what are what are some other ones that I had? Do you remember any? We need to write them all down because they're so good. LA LAL Love After Lockup, my favorite TV show. LAL, not after lockup. Um, another fun story of Pam and I. Uh, one day for her birthday, I got her like a, a day, a spa day. But it was like, it was because I, somebody sent me there and it was like a couple's thing, but we got it together. <laughs> this, is, this is so typical of a day. Ooh. We go, it was in the valley. I want to say it was called the skin spa. You get a massage, you do the facials, you do a million things, you eat lunch out on the, the little balcony, whatever. So we go in for our, our, um, our uh, massages. I get like this like huge Ukrainian lady that I felt like it was like a workout. I mean, she was like twisting, like, I'm like, Ugh. I walked out like, and, she, and I see Pam say, ah, and I see her masseuse, it's like a Chippendales guy, okay? I was like, she was like, oh my God, that guy was like so high. He's like, you know, basically sucking her toes the entire time. I was like, wait, excuse me? Like I was, it, it, you know, I'm over there, I'm injured for mine, okay? And you're over there like, you know, getting, you know, your ankles licked by what I might call the cutest guy I've seen in like 10 years. Um, so we, we got called out on that. We got pictures, you know, constantly being accused of being like, they were, they always said that, you know, you two are dating or you, you know, are you guys lesbians or whatever? And not that I've been anything against lesbians, but we've never hooked up. And we, and one of the great things about being best friends with Pam is that we had completely different tastes in men. And she liked rock stars and I liked rappers. And those two did not ever luckily cross paths. Except one time, one time we were on a, 
Um, we went to the Michael Jordan golf tournament and we both liked Michael Bolton. Yeah, sit your asses down, Michael Bolton. If you ever heard him sing, you would slip out of your clothes so fast. Um, anyways, here's the news. Here's a, here's a real shocker. He picked Pam and I don't blame him. You know what I mean? Like I would totally pick Pam over me too. Like anyways, um, that was the only time and we, but it was awesome because we went to get, we got to go see him sing in the studio and we were both crying our eyes out. Like his voice is insane. He is like, got so much swag that it was in soul. It's crazy. He can out sing anybody. So that was, that got to be like an amazing experience. Um, ugh. Okay. On a serious note, we, even though we partied, like Pam and I, and I still am, I am like very about Jesus. Um, and it came to me one day, God came to me and was like, you need to go and do a prayer with Pam. She was going through a lot of stuff. Tommy was in jail. It was the first episode, first season. Um, you, you can't go now. You, you're either in the episode or you're not there, Billie Jean. Come on. Give me a give. Okay. Say hi. And um, so it's like, go to Pam's trailer and tell her you need to do a group prayer with her. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't know her. This is like insane. She's going to think I'm a psycho. Anyways, I go. I knock on the door to her bodyguard. I'm like, can I talk to Pam a second? And I was like, I'm supposed to come and pray with you. Um, and she was like, well, how do we do it? And we like held hands and prayed. And that day for the next four seasons, that group prayer got to be like 20 people every single day. I mean, they would get pissed on set because they'd be like, they're in group prayer. Like we have to wait for them. Uh, and everybody would come. Crew, craft service, everybody did group prayer. We did it every single day. And it was just like, it was really, really, really amazing. Um, oh my God, I thought of such a good story from the group prayer story. Oh. She's a big prankster, okay? And, um, <laughs> oh my God. She would always be like forever playing. I remember that episode, Polly Shore was the guest star. He wanted to like go out on a date with me and I was like, you know, no. And at the time I had a date with none other than Mario Lopez, okay? And we were going to get sushi. So she's like, we're meeting you. I have Polly Shore in the car. Like, we're coming out there with, to meet you at the, on this date. Like, I'm by myself with Mario Lopez. I'm like, uh, don't come, okay? Like, do not bring him here, you know, the whole way up into, like, being at the um, sushi restaurant. They, they said they had Polly in the car, you know, but, but they didn't. And then she did all, sort of like for my birthday, we did um, wigs because all of a sudden on Howard Stern, we decided that we were in a singing group and it's called Wig. Why did we call it Wig? Is it, I think it was because of all the wigs on the show. I mean, we had people, we told Lenny Kravitz and he was like, I want to write a song for it. We saw him at the Grammys. Like we pretended we were in a singing group. And I think it was because I was in a singing group and all the girls hated me at the time and she felt bad. So we, she gave, I still have it to this day. It's a microphone that says wig on it. Like we totally pretended like we were gonna be in it. And we were gonna like sing and be in a singing group called wig. Um, and had people wanting to write songs for us. So it was like a constant prank. Yeah, she's, she was so silly and so funny. And, you know, sometimes, like, when we would go out, I would do her hair. Just like I, when I grew up, I used to do my girlfriend's hair for prom and makeup for prom. And I've done Pam's hair before. Even though I have no hair, I used to have, like, big Guidette hair. Speaking of Guidette, my Jersey Shore. Polly D, my favorite, holler, shout out to him. Um, 
so those are some of like, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's a million stories, but those are some really good. And my friends in New York used to make me tell them over and over, especially the iced tea one when I'd have to do his hair. Uh, so, oh, we brought it. We got, we have a couple of things. Okay, here are the DVDs for the first season. They only did the first season of VIP. And then I'm sorry. I feel like it's like, when you truly become a, a superstar, you get a action figure. And I had one, and this is Nikki Franco, and she is giving me inspiration to work out um, better. So we, we got this on <laughs> eBay. For, I'm wondering why nobody still wants to keep them. Anyways, so, uh, that was kind of my big accomplishment right there. But we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Um, let me know what you think. If you want to have any questions more, go out and get your lust for love. And I want to say something about that. If anybody knows, like Pam is a romantic. I'll tell you what. She has such great ideas. She loves to celebrate people. So... I, I want to say that every guy that I saw her with, like, fell madly in love with her and then can't get over it, even though they're with other people. They ain't over her. So, anyways, we are, I'm excited that I did this tonight. And let me know if uh, you have any more questions. Find me, iTunes, or wherever you podcast, my website, natalieretano.net. Check out our YouTube. Subscribe, you guys. We're just starting out. So this is kind of like, you know, we're at the we're, we're at ground zero, but we're excited. Natalie Rotano. My Twitter is Natalie Rotano. My Facebook's Natalie Rotano. And Instagram is supernat444. Cheers to you guys. I love you. And stay tuned for our next guest. Next Tuesday is going to be with my incredible now boss. Jason Wimberly, he is, he tells me he's gamous. Well, I'll tell you what, I've never, ever seen anybody with a body like his. And again, thank you so much. Cheers. Night coffee with Nat.